have data about uh, diabetics patients we have data about um um you know we have data about uh, so i'm not many seeing patients. your screen now doctor i'm not seeing your Don't screen worry. Uh, i just decided to flip for somebody who is just trying to log in so i've just done that I don't mean this. So, um, my screen is back. Okay, my screen should be back, I think. So, can you see my screen now? Yes, sir. We can so, the third one is to to load data yeah, from the web yeah. and the third the, the next thing that we're going to do is to see how we can describe our data data description and features how we want to view the tables see the fields summary and a few other things so number one how do you set up our hard environment the essence of setting up our hard environment is to no, be able not yet. to not yet, sir. is from your end everybody can see it i can also see it from my end here so please adjust your own screen i can see from my monitor so um the first thing is the essence of setting this up is this by the time you want to save in your r environment when you save the har the whatever you save should go into a given folder that you have defined for her at the same time whenever you want to retrieve any document you should be able to retrieve it directly from it an environment you have dictated for her before you begin to work that is setting up your working directory setting up your working environment so that is what we're going to do there are two major ways by which you can do that even much more but i think i will prefer to show you first the graphical user interface so how do you do that you go to your sessions just like you have it here in our, our studio when you go to your sessions you go to set working directory and then you click on choose directory once you choose your directory, this should be where you store all the files you want to be working with. Take, for example, now that you want to bring, you want to import a file into Haro. You must first of all go and save that file inside that directory. And once you save that file inside that directory, the next thing is when you open your R Studio, tell R Studio and say that this is the folder I want to be working with. And this is how to do that. This is how to tell R Studio. You just go, like I said, you go to your session, go to set working directory, and from there you choose directory. So I'm going to demonstrate it from R Studio here so that it will launch us into uh, that environment. So I'm in my R Studio and I click on session to go set working directory. There are a number of things there which you can use, but for now, let us choose the last option, which is choose directory. So as you choose your directory, it will bring you to a dialog box here, showing you the path on your, on, your, on your computer. So for me, I always like to go to analysis. There is a folder I call analysis on my computer. So I have to navigate to that. That is where I save all my files. So I have to navigate to that and click on analysis. Let's see if readily. Let me search for it here so that I, can, I will know the path to my analysis folder. It's a folder that I can analyze. This is it here. And that is my user, I will lay a document analysis, so which I can, I can get the path here and copy it into the memory of my computer. Uh, analysis, analysis, where is analysis? This one take me to analysis. Okay. So let's say I have analysis. Um, okay, this analysis here. So you can then copy this path if you like into the memory of your computer. Now go back and click session, session, and say working directory and click choose directory. So you can come in here and paste that path and press your enter. So that will launch you in your analysis directory. 
or in the alternative you can search for it and be clicking be clicking on together so once you get there you just click on open you will see that as you click that this button change there is a code that just uh this path the command line just generated for us there is a code that the command line generated for us can you see that which is set wd so that means from even here the console here you can issue the command to set working directory set wd it's a function to set working directory so once you click set working directory the next thing for you is to put in parentheses the path to your directory which you want to use so let's go on with our powerpoint presentation so like i said um to set up working directory you can also use the command line in the command line there are two useful commands in this instance we have the set working directory these are the, the two functions to set your working directory if you don't want to use that previous one so there's another one to get the working directory that means when you first of all get to your r studio you have to check which directory is active And how do you do that? You use your get working directory, get WD, and then you make sure that to so know which directory you have. So that one will show you that you are working in this particular path. But when you also want to set, you can say set WD and click that. If by the time you type that, it will give you, and then you can write the path from your C, say, you know, and then write the path in full. Then the next thing is for you to just press enter and it will set your path to where you have located it. Right, but I think the easiest one to avoid so many questions is to come in here, set working directory, and then click on choose directory. And then you can choose whichever file or whichever folder you want to work with. Let's say I want to be working in my coronavirus path. I'll just click that and say open. And you find out that this guy will just set my path directly by writing a code for me. So this is the code for the menu you have used. So if you are compiling a code, you want to automate, you want somebody else to be able to do it without going through the command, I mean, without going through the uh, graphic user interface, this is the code that will do the same thing that you have done in the GUI environment. So, and then this is what I have done here. So the next thing here for us is to begin to read data now into our from our local system. On my local system, what we want to do now is so a file is named iris.csv, which is located on our computer in the following path, which is C users aole document analysis. Like I told you, I always like to put my files in analysis. So within the analysis, it says open the file following the given path and inspect the same, inspect the file. How many fields does it have, as well as how many cases does it have as well? Referring to the file irisdocsv stored in the analysis folder. So I'm going to go to my analysis folder first to ensure that to first of all inspect that file. So that we can get ourselves familiarized with how that file is so this is my analysis folder i'm looking for iris file iris i think i can't see my iris again okay is there so this is my iris i'm going to double click to open it in excel so that at least I can see the structure of that file. Can you see it here? Can you see it? We have one, two, three, four, five variables. The first one consists of, let me blow it so that I can be big. And you see, we have separate.length, separate.width, we have peta.length, peta.width, and species. You know, it's about five fields, five fields of data set. And if you look at this last data set, 
we call it class, class data set because it is not numeric. This is not numeric. This is more like a nominal data set. I mean, this particular variable, this species. So this is more or less like an output variable that we can uh, that can be determined by all other combinations from all other variables. We're going to be doing that when we get to regression. So septosa, 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 and we also have very basic color and a number virginica and all of that. So the most important thing is we have five variables, and uh, how many cases? How many cases do we have? Let's see. Let's go to the end. We have um, one fifty one cases. It's not actually 151. You will notice that um, this is telling us 151, is that not? But then you will notice that at the beginning, the heading is occupy the first space. So we apparently have one, uh, we apparently have, um, what do we call it? We apparently have um, like 150 cases. All 50. So we have 150 cases. So the next thing we're going to do now is to go back to our R and import this file into R. So I am going back to my R, and then I'm going to import this file to R. Like I said, how do you then import file into R? So the command to read the file is read, read.csv, and then you call the file. What is the name of the file? The file is... Um, Iris, I R I S dot C S V. And your, the name of your file must be inside the uh, inverted, uh, must be in quotes, which is what I have done. And the next thing for you is to press enter. No such file or directory. Read dot C S V into Iris dot C S V. Okay, what happened here? I, oh, oh, because I I don't know. Let me check my directory. Let me check check my working directory. Um, to check my working directory, I'm going to do what? Get working directory. Where am I? I'm in coronavirus, so it won't work. You won't find the file inside coronavirus. So the next thing for me is to set it back to where the file could be retrieved, which is the environment of my analysis thank you so much set working directory choose directory and i look for analysis and i think i still have a memory maybe yes i have any analysis so this is my analysis i just open the same code that did not work at that point i'm bringing it back again i will just um can you see can you see that file is loaded here immediately but you cannot see that file from the beginning you cannot see that file from the beginning. So you have to scroll, 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 scroll to see the beginning of the file. Oh, this is our file here. Now we have our file here. But let me also tell you that it's also important for you to specify a better way of telling the computer, telling her to let it know that the file I want to bring in has EDA. You know, it has header, it has label on top, or it is the name of variables. That's what we call header. So it is also important for you to tell the computer, to tell R, that the values that you are bringing, they are separated by either space or comma. You know, it depending on what you are doing. Well, some people prefer to type in their code by separating with space, space bar, next one, space bar, next one. So in that instance, you have to tell the computer that the file that is coming, it is coming equipped with uh, spaces. So wherever you see space between one value and the other, uh, recognize that this, this the separator, it is space. But if you have not separated with space, if it is comma, you tell it that the separator is comma. So how do you do that? You are going to issue the command this way, uh, which is, um, you just say read again. You can you already have your read CSV into after that one you put a comma to put another argument the header to tell you that uh, this thing as edo is true put another comma so that will tell you that we have a separator in between the values so that's your separator now you put it in double 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 inverted comma 
and you put a comma in between them, telling it that, oh, what is coming, the separator here is what? It, uh, did I put separator? I need to put separator now. I need to put separator before that. So the true step, separator is step, you accept that, and then you put it in the um, inverted commas, and then you put your comma. That is all. But at the same time, there's another argument. You separate it, you know, command by command will be separated by um, comma. Another one is string as factors. As you are typing it, it should bring it out for you automatically. String as factors. Sorry. String. As we are typing it, it will bring it up. So you just say that word is false. I'm going to explain that word for us later, but not now. So when you press that, and that's all. Once you press enter, the file is read following those commands. So, and then, um, this is all, all, only showing us on the screen. And it is not stored anywhere. So when next you are coming, when you shut down your art studio, you can't continue from where you stopped. You have to repeat that procedure again. But you don't want that to happen. But rather, you want to put it in the container. Like I used to say, you want to put, put it in the, And that container is your data frame. So that's more or less like creating a name. Call it anything. But in this case, I'll call it my iris. You know that. And then put it in this container. Put it in. Put that particular reading of file inside this container. Rather than me seeing it from my screen, it can be in that container. I can call it up at any point in time. So store it in another variable. So you just say read again, read. Ordinarily, you should just scroll your history like this. Go to your history. Eh? And then put uh, the file name here. My iris. Put it in a container. Uh, I always like to... Okay. My my i put it in the container like that and just press enter so the next thing to call up that table that data frame is to just type my iris it's there so if you if you save your work now and you come back to it and you press your my iris your data is loaded so without your my iris you can begin to do whatever you like with the file so to move on Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on and see other things we can do with that. Um, Sorry, it's raining here, so um, let's not be troubled, but I think the internet is back, so we'll we still get there.
So, okay, so let me go back to the slide. Sorry for that little delay. So now, successfully, we have been able to uh, know how to open our files from the local system. So the next thing now, it's uh, while our file is opening. Yeah. We have done this, we have done this, <clears throat> we have done this. So this is where we stopped. We have been able to put uh, the file inside um, a data frame called my iris. So then uh, we want to do other things with it now, which is um, we want to be able to view the file. Like I told you, when you view the file, you can view it from your, uh, you can see it on your screen on the first quadrant. They want to see the dimension as well. We also want to see the first few lines on top. We also want to see the last few lines, the last six lines um, towards the tail end. And they want to see the summary of that table. At the same time, we want to be able to put uh, a particular, the three, three uh, variables. We want to select three variables from the system. So let's see. Good. So let's go back to our R to demonstrate that. Is this is the R we are using. Okay, so this is the R we are using. We want to be able to um, our my iris is the name of our data frame, is that not? So I'm going to go back to four quadrants now so that I want to view it on quadrant one here, within here. So what I'm going to do to do that is you use your capital B E W, which is for view, and then you click on um, my Harris. That's the name of our data frame. You press enter. It should bring it for you here. So from here you can view your data set. From here you can view your data set. You can see this is very similar to what we built in um, in Excel format. So at the same time, uh, you don't want to be scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You just want to see maybe the, the first few lines on top of the data set. And how do you do that? You, you click head. You see the head of my iris. Once you click that, you can see it here. You can see the first six files here. Then you also want to see the last six lines. Tail, that's the tail. You want to see the tail end, the last tail, at uh, the last uh, six lines towards the end of the data set. My iris. So click that, and you see the last six lines. You can see, you can see that, you can see that uh, Virginica is different from Setosa. So this is the last. If you look like at that, this is 150, uh, 149, 150 from 145, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50. Displaying that to you. So also you can also do um, you can also do uh, the dimension. You want to know the dimension at a glance, like we saw there. We we also I can't remember. I remember apparently, but let's let's pretend I do not remember what we uh, opened in Excel because we checked the number of variables that we have and we also checked the number of cases. So here, if you want to know that, you just see dim. Dim is the command in R to represent dimension. Dimension of what? Dimension of my data frame, which is my iris. You do that and you press enter. It's telling us that the dimension here is 150 by 5, meaning 150 rows and five columns. And like you can see, it's also very obvious here. We have five columns here and 150 rows. You can also do a summary. You can do a summary of that. That is statistical summary. We want to, this is more or less like um, a descriptive statistic. 
you want to do the summary of my iris, the summary of my data frame. So here is the, there you go. This is the summary of the data frame. You can see that the there is minimum here for the sepal length, which is 4.3, the first quartile 5.0, the medium 5.8, the mean 5.8, the third quartile 6.4, the maximum 7.9. The same thing goes for another variable, for the third variable, for the fifth variable, and for the fifth variable. You can see that the fifth variable could not summarize because it is not a scale. It is not numeric. There is no summary that can be given order to give you the character. This is, that this is a character or this is a string I cannot summarize. That's what it's telling you here. So that is that. There are a number of things which you can perform here. At the same time, if you also want to select only three, only three, uh, only three columns, you want to knock out. Okay, let's say four columns. You want to knock out the the outcome column. You don't want it to be part of what you want to see. All you need to do is just say, um, um, let's see here. Seconds. Can you see? <coughs> My iris put it into that container, into a new container, if you like. Well, how to know what you do it? Um, you put, you can decide to put another name, my iris, or new, my, my iris new, or new. My iris. Put it inside that container because you are selecting a different variable now. And then say, um, sorry. Select that into a new variable. <coughs> so, and to select into a new, um, okay, let me not complicate it. Let me not complicate that. Let me do other things first, and then we'll come back to that. Let me do other things, and then we'll come back to that. But it's very simple. You can see what I have on my screen here. That's the last one. <coughs> you, what this is trying to do is to select only three columns. Selection is done by double brackets. It is not that uh, normal bracket, like angular bracket. Saying that select my iris data frame. And within that iris data frame, only select three columns. And uh, these are the columns. See, only select these columns. Where is it? My iris. My iris. Oh, this is not the path we're using. Okay, so this is my iris. You understand? We just want to select these four columns. My iris, which is this. <coughs> Excuse me. Only select um, one to four. Let us select one to four. And that is what we have. But it's only the space for you on the screen. But let us now put it in a container. Let's say four, four variables, four. Okay, my iris four. Put it in the container and say my iris four. So by the time you view that, view my iris four. Okay. Yeah. My iris four. Oh, bracket. Oh, thank you. So tiny here. My iris four. You can see that. <clears throat> you have to put it there. So you can see my iris four. Only four variables are now created. The last one, which is the outcome variable, is now locked out. Can you see here? Can you see that? So you can continue to even reduce your, you know, uh, select. If you have more, than, if you have like twenty um, columns here. You can select whichever one you want from that data set this way. And then uh, just use it. Just use it. Because most of the time when you have like, let's, let's say 12, 13, 14 variables from a data set that you download from anywhere, maybe your research is, does not want to touch all those variables. You just select them as you wish, as you like. So, uh, so that is that. Then let's quickly move to getting data from her. Getting data from, what we have just done 
is to bring in data from our local system and then do some manipulations with it. So we are going to get data from R because some data are already resident in R which you can retrieve. And then you can also perform the same operation that we have done now on them as well. So how do we know data that are resident in R? I'm going to tell you, if you know data that are resident in R by typing DRT, I mean DATA, plus press, uh, you know, is a function. Once you put all brackets in front and you press enter, you will see a list of them here, of data that are resident in R, a list of them here. I don't know the number, here. So uh, once you type that, you now begin to look at it one by one, which one do you want? This one is talking about air passengers, monthly airline passenger number, 1949 to 1960. These are real life data, that, like I told you. Another one, BJ sales, sales data, whatever. So how do we then bring them up? These are data frame. Once you just call it, this is like the name you created for that one, my Iris, um, my Iris, you know? So if you want to call up all the data in here, this is a description, a brief description of the data set. This all the things there on this side. But this is the name of the data frame. So if you want to look at this air passenger now, or let's say, let's say BOD, BOD, biochemical oxygen demand. Let's say BOD, you just type your BOD. Like I said, these things are case sensitive. If you type small b and put OD capital, you will not see it. You will not tell me, please, I can't see which one, what are you talking about? So they are case sensitive. Whatever, the way you have written it, they have written it, brother, it is the same you are going to call it up. So if you look at this one as well, uh, there's one that I like. If you look at this UK gas, UK quarterly gas consumption, you want to see the quarterly gas consumption in UK for a given period, you just say UK gas. So it gives you the name, UK gas, you just press enter. But you agree with me that you cannot get this back. Why don't you store it in a data frame which you can assess by yourself again? Then how do you do that? Just say UK data, UK gas. Put it inside a container and say my. It can be anything. I'm just using my my my. Just to say that this is my own. My UK UK gas and press enter. You have redirected that file from the from inside her into your own file name, into your own data frame name. So if you want to call it up again. You just say my UK gas, and you're getting the same thing. So if you want to see the first, the first few lines on top of uh, of uh, that data frame, you use egg. <coughs> Sorry, they just took lights in my place. But I will still manage to see. Uh, let me just tell them to put on the gen. Permit me. So we just add, add um, my UK, whatever. I'm not seeing light stuff, my. So my. My sorry, <laughs> okay, okay. My UK, uh -huh. so it's bringing that. So that will show you the first few lines on top. The first few lines on top, and that's what you have. You can also do the same to say, okay, tail, give me the last one towards the end. My UK gas, and that's what you have. You can also do summary of that as well. Summary. Let's see my UK gas. And that's summary. Giving you the minimum, giving you the first quarter, giving you the median of the numbers, giving you the mean, giving you the third quarter, giving you the maximum of the numbers. <laughs> so uh, these are the two ways. And then we're going to check the third way of uh, the third way by which you can you can bring your data yeah into your into your but let me check my guy to be sure that i did not leave anything out before i move to the next thing so yes i have done that 
data set in R. Yes, this is it. And then <clears throat> now reading data now from the web. The last thing for tonight is to be able to read data from the internet, to download data from the internet. Who is this Akumulafe Rachel? I don't know whether this person is part of us, but I will just admit and then later fix. So, okay, so that's fine. So the next thing now is to uh, check a file that is available in a given path. That path must be known. Now, you know that secondary data are available anywhere. For example, in the, in the world, we have UNESCO data, which you can get on the website. We also have uh, ICT data, which you can get from UNCTAD, ITU. We also have uh, some other data, which you can get from World Bank, World Bank uh, website. They have a number of uh, data for different for countries of the world. Uh, we also have different other data in different places which we are still going to continue to see, a number of resources which you can use. Uh, we also have um, uh, for so many things in America and in different places. So here, this particular path, it's a known path on GitHub for records of prisons, you know, prison data sets of prisoners. So first of all, I think uh well i'm not going to I already have it on my system but i'm not going to show you now so we are going to see a way to download it from the internet from our, our environment so as we do that you must ensure that like i always say that your system is connected to the internet otherwise it will generate error for you so um step one you have to direct that path to an object or a container, more or less like our data frame. So that can be just any name, you know, that can be just any name. So in this case, like we used to say, my data, my iris. So you can call it anything, maybe my URL or my path. But this time around, I call it just URL. Say you copy that file from, I mean, that path from wherever it's coming from, and then say, uh, put it inside them. Um, <clears throat> put it inside that container called URL, which is what we have here. This is the part we're working with. Okay, so just say URL. You want to save that URL first inside that container. My path not copy. Attempted to copy, I think when I see. So you must be uh, okay. It's successfully copied now. So you copy that inside the uh, was most make sure that it's coated on at both ends can be single quotes or double quotes, and then put URL, put it inside that container, it can be capital L, it can be small L, URL, and press enter. Once you do not have any error, it shows that it's already, if you just type your URL now, it's bringing it up, it's bringing that particular thing up again, but you have not done anything. So what you have to do next now is, that's step one, step one is successful. So you now have to create a data frame by reading that thing actually into your R. And what is the command to read data, whether from your local system or from within R? It is the, 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 the function is read.csv. So you are going to read your URL now, read, read.c. Once you are typing it, you just accept. Read URL. It will wait for a time and be blinking why because it is getting from the internet so you can see our url is is running so all you need to do again now is to just say url again and then no 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 uh, that is not url again because you so are supposed to now put that data frame now 
Let's read CSV now into a data frame, which we can call, uh, what do we call it there? Which you can call um, my URL, my, no, no, you can call it prison now because it is prison, prison, prison. It's prison file, prison. Let's now read it into prison. You just press enter. So to wait for a few seconds and the word is there. So just say prison again to see what is downloaded for you. So the data set is here. How then do you see what is on top? You can either view prison to see it here in a press enter. You see it here. Can you see? It's displayed it here in the first quadrant here. That is your prison with so many uh, columns, so many columns which we do not know the number yet. We do not know. And we do not know the number of cases. How do we know that? By typing DIM, let us look at the dimension. Dimension of prison. Prison. The dimension of prison is what is coming, is counting it. Why is it taking time to count them? the dimension of the something that's what you have to type dim but um somebody's trying to yes i can see that but somebody's trying to possibly enter again let's see okay, no. so it's back you can see the dimension 714 lines or rows and 46 columns that is the dimension you can also do the summary all the variables you can also do so many things to uh, to process your data. You can see the beginning. Let's see. We won't see the edge of prison. Prison. We won't see the first few. Um, first few. Yes, you can see them. You know, and then from here we can easily see some of the headings as well. Some of the uh, variable names. They won't see the last one. Uh, what do you do? The last one. What do you do to check the last one? Uh, that's your tail. Tail is crazy. You know, that's what you have. So you can also do so many things. You can begin to do so many things with it. You can plot your regression. You can do your ANOVA with this one. You can do whatever you like with it. You can do some, you can do some descriptive analysis, you know, from this variable. So tonight we have been able to successfully see how we can load files into the memory of the computer so we have used three ways by which okay this is the last thing i want to do i think i could quickly show us so because what you have done here you have only saved it put uh, bring it up on your r you cannot have it on your disk if you go back to analysis you will not find the files there but when you open your R Studio environment, you can still work with it. Only if you have saved your working environment. You know? But you cannot have access to that file. Now, how do you that you have already downloaded the file here? Now, for example, this prison, you have downloaded it here, prison. But you have not saved it on your hard drive. If you shut this one down and you come back again, or you go to your analysis from here now, analysis folder. You cannot meet this for um this prison file there but how do you then save how do you write this onto your disk this is a single formula so this is like uh, if you like if you look at this one and uh, this is right write csv is the command or the function which you can use to save your source file this is source file the main name of your file and then the name you want to give it to give to the file when it's getting to the destination that is the destination file. So in our own case, you are going to write this command, write the CSV into bracket, you know, it's a function. So within that function, there are two categories. There are two, um, two, two partitions. The first one is the source file, which is the name 
of your data frame or the name of the uh, like we have in prison we have prison in our own case so this way is going to be prison and then the name you want it to be bearing when it gets to your disk you then put the name here so which we are going to demonstrate now so let's go to our right um okay you want to write onto your disk as you just type right you see write the csv and then it will give you that so there are two locations the name of that file which is prison comma then what the name you want to be bearing when it gets there it's uh, what let's say also can you call it prison now or oh, my prison my prison dot csv because i want it to be comma separated dot csv and don't forget you have to put it in inverted commas put in inverted commas so and then you press the enter file is saved in your file where do you think the file will be saved where do you think you have to look for the file because at it as it is that file is saved where do you think i should go and locate my file analysis analysis god bless you so we have to see it in analysis uh so let me go to my analysis and check whether my prison the csv i can search even search from here oh is is putting it giving it the whole name like this oh. you have to don't forget we made a mistake we have to call it we have the, our bracket for the first the quotation should be here see it should be in the name of the file not from the file it should be the name of the file alone should be quoted we made a mistake you see this so it will save it as this so i can search for it here my file you know, my prison guy my prison can you see it here it's already found here which is located in my analysis so i come to my analysis here and i look for my my prison so if you double click this one now to confirm whether it is currently saved or not you can see my file here so you have successfully downloaded this my prison from the internet and you have it now on your local system and you can begin to work so tonight, happy. We are able to do um, to see how we can bring files, data sets, into our computer from our local computer, and then from from uh, from our within our R system and from the web, and we can see how to do a few manipulations as well. So, and then at the end of the day also, we're able to write this away from the screen of our studio. So that when we come back again, we want to be able to export the file. Even when you open our email, we want to click that file we have downloaded from prison on the internet to send it to our friends or to do to send it to our partners that we're working together. So we have seen that successfully tonight. So this is where we're going to stop tonight. So if you have questions, let me entertain them as we plan to close so good evening sir can you hear me sir so over to you now yes i can hear you very well uh, i just want to make a request this the slides for tonight's presentation you've not sent it to us can, are we going to receive it it's already there. It's on the Google Google Classroom. Okay. All right. I Thank posted you. it about uh, maybe 30 minutes before the... Okay, but I know that before we started, the, I, I didn't see it. Some hours before the lecture, I, I checked. I didn't see it. I'll check it again now. Thank you, sir. Yeah. All right. You're welcome. Any other person? Are, are, we, are we clear with what we have done tonight? Is it clear? Is it clear enough? Yes, sir. Do we understand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. that's fine. That's fine. So, if that is good, yes, sir. Uh, I'm going to pause the video as well so that at least we can go by it. Okay, so, the assignment for us tonight it's um, 
the assignment for us tonight, I'm going to post it, but I will quickly voice it out here as well, uh, which has to do with, um, you have to get a file called MPG within data, within the data set located in her, MPG, which is a short for miles per gallon, MPG. Look for it inside R. It is part of the data set in R itself. Download it. Download it on your system. And then uh, save it on your system as well. At the same time, uh, attempt to do a summary. Attempt to do a summary of that. At the same time, after you have done the summary, try to view the file in your browser. Uh, what I mean, in your first quadrant of your R Studio, and then try to look for the first few lines as well. And then after you have looked for the first few line, uh, try to try to also see perform some operations like we have done as well with it. Then at the same time, the second the second assignment, look for a URL, which I do not know of your choice. Look for a place where you can get a given data, a given file that you can download. And download that file from the internet into your computer and save it on your computer. So I would like to see the path for each person and I would like to see the code. I'm going to specify what to do. I will itemize it and share it on our classwork. So that will constitute the assignment for before we meet again next week. So if there are no other questions, um, um, yes, somebody is trying to talk. Is somebody trying to say something? Yes, I can hear me, sir. Yes, I can hear you, Mr. Gabriel. Uh, please, uh, I don't know if you shared the timetable for the class so that we can at least have an idea of how the class is going to go from the beginning to the end. I don't know if you shared it or... We, have already, shared, we have already shared that now. We have, is that yes. of Mr. Gabriel? When did you join the class? We have shared this thing now, long before. I checked the classroom or a Google classroom. I could not find it among the documents. Okay. Are you, are you on our WhatsApp page? Yes, sir, I am. Eh, now we have shared this. We, somebody should share again for for us, please, so that they can have a look at that. Thank we already have a timetable. It's on our Google Classroom and it's already on our platform, so we'll share again for you to benefit. So, any other questions? So I'm
So it's good to have you here. Thank you. Uh,